We're, sta we're standing here today at, with Marina Cicciatano, who is the leader of the coalition that's leading the unions that are here picketing the Golden Gate Bridge Administration Building. Uh, she's going to explain to us what this picket line is about. Well, we've been bargaining since April of this year, and uh, we have not made much progress. In July, uh, when our contract was up, we finally got some of the information we needed to respond to the district's proposal. At the same time, they gave uh, the non-represented workers here an increase, and it was intended probably to pressure us. And part of their proposal was that they pick up part of the health costs. That hasn't happened for those non-represented employees, and yet they've gotten that raise. We worked really hard to try and meet the district on their proposal, and despite our efforts, it's not enough. And we draw the line in the sand on retiree health care. People that began working here were promised retiree medical coverage. The district has taken the position that they're going to change that dramatically and change the benefits that were promised to the employees. So we've had we've had 28 meetings with a district, and to date we still don't have an agreement, and it's a shame. One of the issues we have on the table is that the manager's salaries would be capped at $158,000, which we believe is more than fair. And for the pension. The pension, I think it is. Go ahead. Their, yeah, their pension would be capped at $158,000. And they won't agree to that. And yet they want to increase the age for our retirees, increase the cost of medical. And we can't do it. We've given back and given back since 2002 on the medical. We've gone as far as we can go. So that's why we're here to let them know and let the directors know that when they come to the union coalition and ask for concessions, they need to be reasonable, they need to be fair. They can't ask something from us that they don't ask for all the employees here. Uh, and that their proposal should be meaningful and in terms of their budget problems, the proposals they make should address their budget problems and not be principle based. We are not going to make changes to our health care or our retirement based on somebody's principle, some politician's yes, 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 principle. Yes, 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 yes. We have been working here for, you know, since time began. Our retirees are now uh, in a good health plan. The proposal the district has on the table would reduce those benefits and make some of our aged people come and appeal to the bridge for you know certain kinds of coverage that they have today without incident. Besides the coalition bargaining we also bargain individual contracts. We've had very difficult time making any progress in those contracts. Uh, some of the things we're asking for are pretty basic like seniority based layoffs, how you know a lot of us have them, but not all of the units have that. We also want agency shop, just like all the units have. Um, we also have some issues for our group, the deckhands, where we've got a tremendous amount of bicycles. Our deckhands are expected now to lift bicycles, and we're talking about hundreds and hundreds of bicycles every day. Um, this is something that has developed through the last five years and it's gotten to the point of ridiculous. They've reduced the number of people on shore side to help with the um, passengers and put more, more responsibilities on our deckhands. And, you know, some of the decisions they make along the way we can't agree with and we're not going to tolerate it. You know, we've tried to go along with the district now since 2004 on these bicycles. And uh, that needs to be solved as part of our package. So we're going to be out here until we get a fair contract. Has the, the company, been, the, the uh, bridge, been raising their fares uh, over the years here? Yes, they raise their fares. They have a five-year plan. They raise their fares uh, every year. And, uh, you know, so you get less service now, and you're paying a lot more for it. We just talked with a pedestrian here who was uh, commenting that she was particularly upset about the 
uh, bridge decision to lay off all of the toll collectors. Do you have any comment on that? I do. You know, we just went through it with our ticket agents, and uh, it's very, very different kind of company. The company has always been, up to this point, very customer service oriented, and uh, now that's one of the first things to go. And, you know, these folks have been working here <clears throat> since the bridge opened, and it's going to be a very difficult transition, not only for the workers, but for the public. Not everybody wants to go into fast track. Some people like seeing somebody saying good morning and, you know, getting directions and, you know, asking questions about our city. And that human element has been part of this bridge for so many years. It's going to be a real difficult transition for not only our people that are losing their jobs, but also the public. Thank you, Marita. Directors, <clears throat> thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, you know, we just want to say a few things about how things are going for us. <clears throat> I think we've tried to communicate um, the specifics for you, and uh, what comes back for us is pretty disturbing. <clears throat> so where we are at this point um, is we've done what we feel is fair, more than fair, the number of proposals the district came forward with are excessive. I've been on every bargaining group since 1979, so I have some history on that. The um, cost-sharing proposal that you have for the benefits is going to be tough for us to do. And I think we've been <coughs> point several times, but I don't think folks understand what we've given. And the reason I say that is because we've asked for some information from the district to sort of quantify the different proposals that we've given back since 2003 and the medical concessions. And the numbers we get are really um, shamefully inaccurate. And I say that because we compared with the proposals when we got them what the cost savings was estimated. Now, I can understand they're not going to be exact. But off $400,000, I mean, you know, that doesn't sound right. So in 2006, I think some of the medical proposals we gave um, were something like $600,000 was the projection. It may not have come out to that, but we know it was something like that. And we can't get those numbers back. So, you know, when we ask for information from the district. So, you know, we have to proceed with our negotiation without the benefit of that. And um, our point we were trying to make, and everybody knows and we won't pull any punches with it, is that we've given much more than 2% back in medical concessions since 2003. And that we are now expected to do that and come up with a percentage of the premium, etc. cetera, um, we think is outrageous given the fact that we've made reasonable proposals. We're certainly not done with bargaining. We expect to have more sessions and come to an agreement. But we need your help to communicate that, you know, the proposals out there right now are a little unfair. In terms of the retired medical, i got to tell you, we have gone way past where I thought we would go. You know, the district is looking for something pretty radical. And uh, so we've spent 24 sessions, 25 sessions just on that. I think we've been in bargaining 27 sessions, and I keep saying, is this the day we're going to get it done? And unfortunately, we haven't seen the kind of movement we need to make this thing happen. You know, when we talk about our retirees, we can't leave you behind. You know, we know that with the system the district wants to do that we'll probably agree with to some extent. You know, we can't have people that are 75 coming to the bridge to a meeting to appeal for a little extra medical coverage. You know, I mean, I just can't see doing that to people. We've all got parents and grandparents and what have you. Can you see? setting up a system for them when they were promised medical coverage that's so different that now as elders they have to come and do this. I mean, I think it's really been um, hard on everybody to think that the district would ask us to do that. So I want to say that the other thing, I know my time's up. Time, time is up. Uh, but one more thing, I hope you can tolerate. Another cost-cutting proposal we made was to cap, put a cap of 158000 a year as the largest pension the district would pay. Um, this would put a limit on oversized management pensions. The district rejected that. You know, if we're going to take some type of uh, approach to reduce costs, why isn't that fair? So anyway, I think I speak for everybody when I say we've done what we can do and we need to move on. Thank you. Yeah.
will be back. We will be 